funny to talk to us a little bit about the Irish fans. I mean, the Irish fans, I know what I can see when I go to these events. They're very passionate people. They're a passionate bunch. And, and what can you tell us about them back at home? I haven't had the luck to actually be in Ireland for a, uh, for a fight, but what is it like to, to, to see them in, uh, you know, right there um, supporting you in their fighters? Yeah, you know, you see when it, when any Irish fighter fights anywhere in the world, you know, the Irish people show up and, and they support their own, you know, so you can can only imagine what it's going to be like back in Ireland, you know, because a lot of people, you know, they can't they can't travel or they can't get to these places, especially like L.A. or 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 places I've been fighting like New York. You know, it's very hard for people to get there. Um, But going back to Ireland and, and having all the Irish fans actually there able to get to the show, it's going to be it's going to be crazy, you know, back. Back in back in the homeland, I haven't fought there in 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 four years, you know. So I'm mm. looking forward to it, and I think it's gonna be a it's gonna be a crazy night. So you you'll be facing uh, Ronowski next. Obviously, he's 30 years old from Poland. How much more do you know about him in regards to fighting a style that could give you some trouble? Yeah, you know, I don't really know much um, about him. I don't really look too much into my opponents. I know uh, Freddie Roach is gonna make. Um, the game plan and I'll and I'll stick to the plan and I think uh he's never been stopped before, you know, and um I'd be looking forward to, to going in and, and trying to finish the fight, you know, and trying to be the first person to to knock him out. So Colin, as you keep advancing in, in boxing, you'll start obviously to face more difficult opponents. Where do you would you rank Runowski for what you've seen of him or what you heard of him? And I know you don't really know him much. But you might have an idea of where to where to rank him. Yeah, I would say it's definitely going to be my my toughest fight um to date. You know, considering that he's um twenty two wins with only two losses and he's never been finished. You know, he's uh been in there with some with some with some names around the division and and they couldn't finish him. You know, so he's going to be tough and um I think it'll be a good fight for me if if I if I do finish him. You know, if I do. Um, get him out of there. It'll be a big uh, statement for me back in, back in, back in Ireland. You know, and and around the world. You know, for for the people that are watching boxing, the people that are watching me. You know, it'll be a good um time for me to prove that I am I'm the real deal. You know, if I can if I can finish him. When when someone hears the story of how you were able to connect with Freddie Roach, you know, come to the to the gym and everything, it almost makes it seem that it is just. Very easy just to walk into a gym and make it happen. But what really went on for that to, to happen? I know you came from, from your country and then all the way over here and, and risked it all. Like, what was the reaction of your family, the people, when you decided to just make the trip over here and hoping to, to land something here? Yeah, you know, uh, a lot of people see what I've done and, and they don't see the hard work. You know, they just see the results. They just see the wins. They see me with Dana White, you know, and they, they don't see what really went into it, you know, to make it happen. And it was hard, you know, I've had, um, I had to have 140 amateur fights back in Ireland, you know, I won six uh, national titles back there, I won the European Championships. Um, I tried to qualify for Olympics when I was 18 years old, and unfortunately I lost in the final of the, of the qualifiers, and um, that's when I decided to come here, you know, and uh, yeah, it was a big risk, you know, but if you, if you don't take risk, if you don't take chances, you know, you, you'll never know what's going to happen. You know, the worst the worst case scenario for me is I was going to come here and it wasn't going to work out. I was just going to go back home. You know, that was the that was the worst thing that could have happened. But thankfully, everything worked out. You know, I showed up here at Freddie Roach's gym and um, I've been here ever since. You know, I had no real intentions of really turning pro when I first came here, but I did. I, I Again, I took another chance and I turned pro and now I, I'm, I'm sitting here talking to you. You know, it's like... But I believe everything happens for a reason, you know, and, and uh, you just have to let things happen. You know, everything does happen for a reason. I didn't qualify for the Olympics for a reason, and, and now I'm here, you know, doing, doing um, you know, big things still, you know, and it's like I wouldn't be headlining this this event in the tree arena in Dublin, Ireland, you know, if I didn't make that decision to come here, if I didn't take those chances, you know, if I didn't lose that fight. So everything happens for a reason, you know, and I'm, I'm very... um. Grateful to to be sitting here and and have these opportunities at, at such a young age, you know. Awesome. Uh, so every time your name comes out, somehow you are connected to UFCs, which is really really curious and very 
fun to hear, no? And you are also in a relationship with a UFC fighter, uh, Tabitha uh, Ricci, which is uh, really cool. Can you talk about how you and, and her are able to balance between your relationship and your respective careers? I mean, obviously you have training, she has training, traveling, going. How, how does that work? Like, how do you make that possible? You know, it's very easily, actually. It's, 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 uh, it is a lot easier than if I was with just um, an, a normal person, you know, because Tabitha, she understands my career you know she understands what i need to do and i understand what she needs to do you know it's like if i have training she's not like oh we i want to do something tonight you know or i want to go for dinner if i have training she knows i have to train you know and if she has training i know she has to train so it, it's it's very easy you know it helps um it helps in that way you know not having to explain why you need to train so much or not having to explain like oh i need to go on and have this meeting or i need to go run or i need to go do this you don't have to explain yourself you know she understands exactly what I'm doing and, and why I need to do it and uh, she helps me you know and I help her in, in preparation for a fight you know like like she fought two weeks ago you know so we were both in camp at the same time we we're both helping each other we we're both if I need to go for a run and I don't want to and then I see her she's gonna go I'm like all right fuck it now I have to go you know it's like <laughs> you're pushing each other if, I, if I'm waking up in the morning I'm tired she's getting up and I'm like right now I have to get up you know it's like if she trains one more time I have to train an extra time you know you don't want to let her train more than me you know so it's like uh we push each other and it, and it, it works out good you know and especially too with the with the diet side of things you know it's like we're bored on strict diets the food in the house is is all clean you know it's not like one is on a diet and the other one is not you know so it's it's like we're both doing it together and it, and it makes it a lot easier who who does the cooking? Mostly her, you both. Yeah, she does. She does the cooking. I'm not, I'm not, I I cook a few things, right? You know, a few Irish dishes that I that I learned from my grandmother. But uh, yeah, I'm not the best cook. She's she's a bit better than me at the cooking. What would be the the your favorite thing that she's cooked from her heritage? We know she's Brazilian, and has she learned also from your side uh, to cook any dishes in particular? Yeah, she cooks me a few a few nice things. I can't I can't remember the name. To be honest, uh, I went to I, I went to Brazil and I and I um I had food over there. I was actually over there for for Christmas, you know, and I had the Christmas dinner with with her family and stuff over there. And you know, I, I really like the food. And um, yeah, I've been trying to teach her. I've been trying to get my grandmother to teach her a few mm -hmm. Irish uh, Irish recipes. Uh, and they actually sent us. It's my grandmother and my aunts and stuff from back home sent us over a, a care package recently with all the ingredients stuff we need. So uh, oh, wow. she's learning. She's learning uh, how to make the Irish dishes, the the shepherd's pie, and all that kind of stuff. So, so it's good. Yeah, awesome. That's amazing. And what well, she's even said that um, now thinking about the sports, obviously, that you um, she believes that you like the sport more than you're showing. Uh, you know, obviously you're very well what you do in boxing and you care for the sport, but you also like a lot of martial arts. Have you practiced it before? Uh, where does that passion come from? Yeah, you know, the thing about it is I've been watching the UFC since I've been like 10, 11 years old, you know, um, since Conor McGregor, you know, since he started uh, in the UFC, it's just like the whole the whole country was watching, you know, the whole country got behind him and, and he was fighting all the time and it were big fights and we were staying up late at night watching the UFC, you know, and I just got a, got a passion for it, you know, and it's, I, I trained boxing my whole life since I was six years old. So I, so that's all I knew, you know, it was like, I, I all I knew was to just go to the boxing gym and train and fight that. That was my life, you know? So I never got into boxing through watching it or through being a fan of boxing. You know, that was just my life. It was just what I knew. That was just it, you know. I just, I just knew I had to go to the gym three nights a week and train, and and I used to fight at the weekend. That was just my thing. But whereas with MMA, you know, I got into it from from watching McGregor, seeing, seeing the shows, and and feeling the hype. You know, staying up late at night and watching the fights, and I think that's where, it, where it came from. And obviously, from watching those fights, I I got into it more. And was and then as we started to watch me, and my friends would watch the UFC every weekend, you know. And it was like the thing that was what we did. We just we would all meet up on the weekends and we would watch UFC. And um, I think that's why I like it so much, you know, because that's how I got into it compared to boxing. It was just my life, you know, and uh, yeah. And then now that I'm connected with the UFC and and, and working with with Dana and stuff, it's 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 crazy, you know. I I can't I can't even believe it to be honest. So Conor McGregor, you mentioned obviously uh, he he has taken the image of the Irish fighter to another dimension. Really, I mean, it's it's just crazy in the global sense of it. 
and he's made history with great fights. He even had a, a crossover uh, in, in boxing. What does that represent to you as an Irish fighter who's still young in his career and, and you know, setting the bar so high and, and for you to follow the, the steps? You know, it's crazy. You know, it just shows that, like, Ireland is such such a small place, you know, but it doesn't matter that where you're from or how small of a place you are from, you know, you can still go and, and do big things in the world, you know, and it's, it's, that's what it, that's what it's given me, you know, that's what it's, what it's shown me that it doesn't matter. Like, I'm from a town that has 7,000 people, you know, it doesn't, it doesn't matter how small of a place you're from or, or who knows about it or whatever, you can still go out in the world and, and, and do big things, you know, and that, and that's what I've taken away from it. And that's what I'm trying to show people. And that's what I'm, I'm trying to leave behind me too. You know, that a lot of people have this idea in their head that it's like, oh, sure. I'm from this tiny little place. How can I do anything? You know, it's like, if you just get out there and you see the world and you, you take opportunities and you take chances, you know, you can do it too. And that's, that's what I'm trying to show people. I have a last, uh, a last couple of questions. Uh, Talk to us about uh, that first encounter and where and how did it happen with Dana White? How did you get to like uh, meet him for the first time and how did that uh, just simply happen? Yeah, so I just signed a, a contract with, with Tom Loeffler. I made my, my pro debut on Tom's show and then I signed a contract with Tom and he was working with Dana, you know, with the UFC Fight Pass. So Tom had just signed an Irish fighter and he obviously knew that Dana has a lot of history with Irish fighters. So... He brought me down to just to just meet with Dana and um and me and Dana we talked for a while and and he liked me you know and then he came on board with his uh Powerhead whiskey he, they they sponsored me first for a couple of fights Dana came to see me fight and uh, he was impressed with my performances you know and he talked to Freddie Roach him and Freddie have a good relationship too uh, and Freddie told him that he has a lot of confidence in me and he thinks that I can uh, be a champion you know and um, that's why Dana came on board. 100% of my career, and he wants to to help me win that world title. Awesome. Do you see yourself, finally, do you see yourself uh, having some fights throughout your career in, in, in UFC? Yeah, you know, I think uh, I have a great opportunity because I'm 23 years old. You know, I'm very young. Uh, I'm ranked already top 10 by the WBC, you know, in boxing. If I can, if I can get up there and, and win the world title, at a young age, you know, and, and know that I'm the best in the world. And uh, who knows, you know, maybe I could still have time to, to cross over and, and uh, give the UFC a try. Awesome, man. Thank you so much. And good luck to you in, in you know, in the rest of your uh, this year and uh, nothing. Thank you so much for the time, especially yeah. after training. So yeah, thank you. Appreciate it. Thank you, gentlemen. Thank you.